What's up guys? I'm Nick and this is Build Dead Build, a place where we believe that the key to everyone's heart is black tar heroin. I mean chocolate. So we're going on like three weeks of Nick having this frog in his throat, so bear with me. That's right guys, we're back with another video. Uh, I'm filming upstairs in the office because it is incredibly hot in the shop right now. But we'll be working on the Muse Core today. We'll be working on the CO2 laser uh, in, in the air conditioning, kids, in the air conditioning. No pleasure, no rapture, no exquisite sin greater than central air. So I've been doing some browsing on Etsy lately, looking for some new products to come up with and publish in the shop. And I found kind of a little niche of uh, retro keychains that, that appears to be like kind of a big deal now. You remember the old school key rings, the ones with that had an actual key on it when you went to like a motel and then they had little plastic things so you didn't take off with it or forget that it was theirs for whatever reason. So keychains like these, remember these? Well, apparently they're back, baby. Um, and just, I guess the kind of retro thing is is the deal, because obviously we don't use hotel keys anymore. I go out of my way to not have any keys, but I guess some people still have keys. So the ones I've seen, like say, have a nice day and shit like that on them, I wanted to do some more kind of like pop culture themed ones. If, if you know, you know, this is a hotel key for, for Ozark, the Netflix original. This is Jonah's room. If you want to stop me, you're going to have to... Um, I mean, I think everybody would know the Bates Motel. The Rosebud Motel is a little Shit's Creek. Ew, David. And then I did this one on Walnut uh, for Camp Crystal Lake. The issue I had was material. It, everything worked fine for the Camp Crystal Lake one because the walnut and the wood just made sense. But the other ones, I tried them on acrylic and they just didn't have that pop. I tried to mask them and then spray paint them, but some of the detail was so small that it didn't really translate through. So I reached out to my buddy Ryan at Enduramark and he hooked me up with this. This is engravable plastic. This is designed to be cut and engraved by your laser. And as you can see, this one's green. It has a white backing. So when you engrave it, it comes out white. And when you cut it, it, it makes holes in it. And the beauty of this stuff is it comes in a ton of different colors. So you've got black on white, red on white. You get the idea. Blue doesn't do so well on a uh, diode laser because of the color of the beam. But then you get into things like gold on black, silver on black, white on red. I don't know if you can tell, but that's white on blue. Oh yeah, that looks blue around there. But a ton of different colors. And before I see this in the comments, we're doing this on the CO2 because the D1 did have a little bit of a problem getting clean edges. So if you look real close, you see how that's, it's it cut through, but it's kind of jaggedy. This one down here is a little bit better, but I think that was like multiple passes, like, five or six passes maybe. So this is kind of doable with the diode laser, but you're gonna have to tweak some settings and you may have to do a little sanding on the edges. So I've not touched this with the D1 20 watt laser yet. So you may get better cuts on the 20 watt, but today we're gonna be using the Muse. Uh, it'll be a little quicker, a little cleaner. Let's do this. So just to make this a little simpler, I'm gonna do this in Illustrator. So basically we're gonna come in and we're just gonna make a two by six canvas. I'm gonna put my rulers in. I'm gonna bring this down to halfway, so three inches. Oops, there it is. To halfway, which is one inch. Okay, and then I'm just gonna grab my pen tool, and the biggest thing here is you wanna look for that intersect to come up. And we're gonna make this funky looking diamond. Okay, and once that's done, I'm gonna punch up a stroke on it, get over here, select it, and then we're gonna grab our direct select tool, which is the white one, and we're gonna grab this little ball right here. So if you haven't done this already, you wanna go up to window, you wanna pull this down to transform and pull up your transform window and make sure to say scale corners. If that's not checked, this won't work right. All right, so then we're just gonna grab this little ball and we're gonna pull it down. And basically here, let's put another line in here. We just wanna get this down to one inch because then that's gonna be, that's gonna make this two inches here, two inches here. So our keychain will be four inches, which is what we're looking for. 
we're just going to continue to pull this down until we get to four inches. And then if you look here, what do you know? Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to draw some lines. Make sure the shape is unselected. We're going to come in here, grab the pen tool, and we're just going to draw some lines across this. So um, just draw a line until it says intersect and then hit escape. Now you can do these however you want. And then you just do the same thing at the bottom. It just uh, adds a nice little detail. I've got this the way I like it. So I'm sure there's an easier way to do this, but I don't know how. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna grab these two lines and I'm just gonna remove them. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna make myself a circle. Like make sure that I'm dead center. And then we'll align it to here real quick just to make sure. Okay. Now I'm going to recreate those two lines by coming in here and drawing two here and then hitting escape, coming over here, drawing over. This way I can draw around that circle. I know there's got to be a way to punch that out, but honestly, I just don't know what it is. And then of course we're going to come in here and we're going to clean it up a little bit. Okay, next we're going to Google Images and we're going to type in Lazy O Motel Keychain. So we'll find a good picture of one. Let's back this up and go Ozark. I'm going to copy that image. And I'm going to bring it in here to Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to drop it in here. And then we are going to image trace this. And we're going to image trace it by default because I don't need any of that other information, right? All I want is this stuff right here. So I'm going to come in here to my direct select tool. So first off, I'm just going to de delete all this stuff around here and you get the idea. We're just going to clean this up. So give me a sec. Let me clean this up. Okay. Now we're going to come in here. We're going to grab this guy and we look pretty clean, right? So what we're going to do is just change the fill from white to black. And basically I want the lazy O to be as big as possible, right? So we're going to tweak it around until we can get it to a spot where it's very noticeable, but it's not, you know, it's not going outside the frame at all. So probably right about there. Next, we need to recreate the lettering inside this. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to type out motel and I want something fairly bold because these are going to be small ladders. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to grab this. I'm going to bring this over here and it's going to extend along here. I think we're looking at probably like 300 or something like that, where it's like the big thing is what I'm looking for now is where this Y comes down has to come in between the M and the O. Okay. So now we're going to change the fill color to the, of this to white and take it up here, we'll put it in there. It looks like it's a little big. I'll drop it down, move it up. Now it looks like we need to possibly uh, make this even bigger. 750. Perfect. Well, kind of perfect. Now my concern is the way this comes down, that L is going to be weird. So we're just going to push into here again. We're going to grab our direct select. We're going to look for, we're going to look for the anchors here. Pull this down a little bit and then we're just going to pull this down a little bit and apparently pull this down a little bit and just give us a little bit of line there on the bottom. Okay. Next stop is our room number. We are going to uh, do an ellipse tool, draw a circle 0.75. All right. And then we want to turn our fill off, give it a stroke of probably, probably one. Going to grab this, bring it up here, and then we're going to center it to the rest of our design. So we're going to use this and we're going to center object. We'll put our number in there. Uh, Jonah's number in the, sh in the show is, I'm going to do 138. We want to do a little bit of a different font here. Uh, kind of a, probably more of a roundy font per se, I guess. Um, just to kind of give it more of that 
feel of a room number. So just a little bit more of a Comic Sans without actually using Comic Sans. And then I'm gonna grab this and bring this over here. And then we just wanna center that in the circle by selecting both the number and the circle and using the center tool. All right, so everything else is just details, right? So I'm gonna come in here and I am going to say Lake of the Ozarks, Osage Beach, Missouri. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna make it centered. I am going to reduce it down so it'll fit. Oh, wrong way. I'm gonna reduce it down so, so it'll fit. I actually like this font a little bit better um, than the original one, but I already have this mocked up in Retina Engrave 3 as well. So let's hop over into Retina Engrave 3 and we'll take a look at where we go from here. Okay, so now that I've brought the, the keychain image into Retina Engrave 3, I just wanted to go over uh, kind of what I did after the fact. So let's, um, let's grab this. I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna move it to a new project. So I imported this in, and then I used the tracing tool to trace the outside only. Then I used the ellipse tool to make a circle about the size of the other one. So those are gonna be my vector cuts. But then what I did is I took those two and I copied them again, and that became the back of the keychain. And then in Retina Engrave 3, I decided that I wanted to put Welcome to Lake of the Ozarks on the back of the keychain. So I grabbed my text tool and I said, Welcome to Lake of the Ozarks. Oops, Ozarks. And I wasn't crazy about that font. So I went through here until I found kind of a, what I thought was like a more funky font. This is not the one I originally used, but just for argument's sake, uh, I went ahead and filled it and aligned it center. And then I grab my direct select tool, or I grab my, grab my select tool and spun it. And then I just changed the size until I had the size I thought I wanted. So 36 is too big, 24 is too small, go like 28. And grab this and put it in the center. And then I just grab the outside of this and center, center, and we're ready to go. Okay, now let's jump back to the original. Okay. So now we have the front and back of our keychain and the settings we're gonna be using for this are as follows. One, we have to raster this. So for the engrave, we're gonna go, be going 500 DPI, 30% power, 100% speed, 125% threshold. Um, the threshold on this isn't gonna matter as much. This is just gonna be 500 by 500 and this is gonna be 30. Our vector engrave is gonna be 50% speed, 75% power. And this smells exactly as you would expect it to. We'll grab these. Okay, and next we're down in the shop. Um, what we're gonna do is just a little CA glue it's by Starbond. I'm gonna take this. I don't use activator with this because what I wanna do is I wanna put this on and then I wanna make sure that my holes line up because guys, you know you always want your holes to line up. And then I just clamp it with one of these guys. I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. Okay, once they have sat for about 15 minutes, I go ahead and pop them out. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit them with a little 220 sandpaper on the edges just to make, just to kind of knock down if there is any little seam, just any little variance on it. I mean, do that like so. And last, they get the ring itself. And I like to use, I'll link to what I use down below. Uh, I do one of these simple rings, but I also like to put on one of these clasps because I think that these are a little bit more functional than just having the, the twisty ring. Um, I just think it makes it look a little bit better. 
So then you're looking at final product right there. A little lazy -o. Welcome to Lake of the Ozarks. I want to say thanks for sticking around till this time in the video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It just really helps me out. I want to say a special thanks to all of my patrons. These guys are the bee's knees. I am losing my voice, especially my top tier or Boilermaker patrons. Steven Mann, Eric Weiss, Derek Coates, Chuck Faulkner, Puffy Muffins, Andy the Viking, Christopher Walters, Todd Stewart, Paul Christensen, and Jason Ayers. Clinkies. Special single shout out goes to our newest patron, Marlon Doust. Double clinkies. All right, guys, what do you think? Do you like E? Would you buy E? Do you think you should sell E? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, thanks for playing. Now I gotta get to the Ozarks. So I've been doing, why does that, that light suck? No idea what shot over the ceiling or something. I don't know what that is.